Hello members and welcome to episode 2 of GPL 360. Uh, as usual, I'm here with my co-host, CEO Matthew Lockman. Welcome Matt. Thanks Nick. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to do a preview of the women's competition. We're going to go through all the teams, um, analyse the players who we think um, are going to be good recruits for some teams. Um, we're also going to make some predictions on the season and then we'll go through round one of the men's results, which was played a couple of days ago, Matt. Yep, good. Starting off, um, the 2015 champions, the Birdie Num Nums are back again. Uh, they've got a new captain in Elisa Collins. Um, Sue Bradshaw, Di Grail and Trish Sloan are new players added to the Birdie Num Nums. Um, and they've also retained Jane Blythe, the uh, bronze championship. Uh, Matt, anyone from the Birdie Num Nums that you like there? Mm, I think Trish Sloan's a good inclusion in the Birdie Num Nums. Uh, Jane, um, after a stellar season last year, they're probably the two um, players to watch from my point of view for the, the Birdie Num Nums. I think they're going to, coming from fifth last year, uh, I think they'll sneak up into the finals. Back in the finals? Yep. Yeah. Uh, next team, Hit and Miss. Yep. 2016 champions, uh, they finished on top of the ladder. Um, now they've got an interesting uh, recruitment here. Brenda Alzaka, which was uh, she was originally a fairway filly. Mm -hmm. uh, she performed extremely well early last year. Yep. I'm not sure how the fairway fillies uh, let her go. To be honest, maybe she didn't have a one year contract. Um, but yep. she's now the captain of Hit and Miss, um, and they've also picked up Christine Anastasiu, one of our new members. Um, has quite a a large handicap to begin with. I think she could have some. Um, some big scores early, definitely. In particular, yep. Um, besides that, they've retained the same eight players, so yep. very good uh, roster management from the uh, hit and miss map. Yep. Who do you like in the hit and miss? Um, I think their whole team's pretty strong, actually. To be honest, they finished on top of the ladder last year, won the grand final. Uh, team to beat um, as the the champs. Uh, my players to watch would be Wendy Reynolds and Leonie Barnes as the uh, the two players, like Leone's just coming back from an injury. So yep. uh, it'd be interesting to see how she goes, especially early in the season, but they're the two players that will have a fairly big impact on how they go this year. I think hit miss will be right up there again. Yep. Early birds, uh, the 2016 Survive Cup winners, they were pretty consistent. They were basically third all year, I think. Yep. Swingers in hit and miss had the top two spots locked and they just mm -hmm. had third wrapped up all year. Um, Hilary Hodgetts is still the captain, um, pretty good leadership there. They've retained Lois Wheelahan, the um, Cutchin runner-up, um, and they've also gained a couple of players from other teams. Uh, women's committee member Jenny Cropley from the Pearlers and uh, Sally Stockley from the Silver Foxes. Um, probably the only loss was uh, Josephine Ryan, who's gone to the uh, newly formed team, the Dragon Ladies. Yeah. I think they're going to be pretty solid again, Matt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll they'll fit, definitely finish. Uh, the, uh, be mentioned as part of my predictions yep. um, for the end of the wrap up. And good, excellent. Uh, I think they're going to be solid again. They'll be definitely top four. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next then, uh, they've had a name change. They were originally the Q Ramblers. Yes. Um, they're now Chicks with Sticks. Cool. Really nice name. <laughs> um, Leonie Silk is still at the helm, um, and they've got quite a fairly. Uh, Large list of um, accomplished players in the team. Uh, Anne English is the C grade champion from last year. Janet Alice is the Grant Hay champion from last year. Janet Tucker, they've uh, retained her as MVP from last year. They've gained the Silver Foxes MVP, Gail Feller, and um, they've gained um, Ellie McCrone, who was very solid for the Q Birdies. So some good recruitment. Um, the Chicks for Sticks have started to throw around some money, obviously. To, um, I'm not sure if they've got a secret donor or yeah, a backer, but yeah. um, to pick up those players, they look very strong. Last year they finished six mid-table. Yeah. They had uh, six wins, one draw, and six losses. So yes. with um, the form of some of these players, plus mm -hmm. the handicap of recruits, they could uh, definitely sneak into the format. It's going to be tough to um, sort of pick our finals uh, teams with with this sort of talent of, of teams. So because last year we had uh, about thirteen teams of eight. Yeah. Obviously, uh, best four scores counter. Mm -hmm. This year we've gone. We've got seven teams of ten. Yep. Best four scores count. Mm -hmm. So I think each week we're going to be seeing a lot of good scoring. Yep. Um, so as you said, it's going to be tough to kind of separate um, yep. the it's ladder quite a lot when you match. Definitely. Yeah. So chicks with sticks could be up there. Next team, uh, Fairway Phillies. Um, as we said earlier, they lost um, Brenda Ozarka, one of their best players, to the hit and miss. Um, Janita Monahan is still the captain. Uh, we've got some solid players in Leslie McLeod, 
uh, Ann Drashler, and they've also recruited Jan, uh, Jill Darling, one of the new members. Um, mm -hmm. She's been playing quite well. I think the fairway fillies will have to, um, I think they'll have to play pretty well to feature in the pointy end of the season. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, they were solid last year, um, but they'll need to be a bit better than solid this year to actually push up into those final yep. um, top uh, couple of positions. So, um, look, they could be, you know, they could be one of the Smokies this year, the Fairway, Philly, uh, Fairway Phillies, but um, we'll need to play pretty consistent, I think. Yeah, they were um, in the top four quite early last year yep. for quite a period of time, mm -hmm. and they just... Fell out right at the end, and uh, I think it was the QT last year came from about, That's right. came yeah, from about seventh too. position in the last yes. six games. Yes. Um, moving on to the uh, two new teams this year, uh, we have the uh, Dragon Ladies. Uh, Kim Fua, I think, um, literally bounced down the stairs to hand in her entry form. Yep. I think she's pretty confident with their chances. Good. Um, they've got Jenny Lee, who's a quarter finalist uh, for the Bronze Championship last year. Uh, Sue, who was a new member, playing quite well, she's had a fair few lessons. Mm -hmm. I picked up Josephine Ryan uh, from the Early Birds. Yes. And also EJ Park from Eastern Golf Club, I think, has joined our women's pennant squad. She's up about 10 or 11. Okay, cool. Um, scores pretty cons consistently. Yeah. Um, I think they're uh, a good chance, but again, haven't seen them perform in GPL before, so who knows, Matt? What do yeah. you think? Well, it's a good thing about having two new teams in this year's women's GPL is you just don't know. You don't know how they're going to perform and where they're going to feature. So uh, it's exciting to see the Dragon Ladies come in and to see how they go. Yeah, awesome. Last team, number seven. Uh, they literally rang about half an hour ago and changed their name. Okay. Uh, they are now the Hot Dots. The Hot Dots. Um, yep, so yeah, a bit of a blast from the past there with Hot Dots, but they've got a very... Very strong lineup, and I'm not sure if this team was all banded together at the last minute, but yeah. they've got um, similar to the Chicks with Sticks, quite a big um, a big list of accomplishments in the last twelve months. Uh, Faye Bolton is a four ball winner. Andy Byrne was the Q Birdies MVP. Mm -hmm. Ray Buchanan was the runner up in the C Grade Championship. Pauline Caven was the runner up in the B Grade Sorrento Championship recently. Yeah. Um, Helen Elliott was our bronze runner up. Uh, they also picked up GPL veterans Jan Freestone and Jenny uh, Mooney, and they've also got uh, June Wills. So, um, led by Captain Jenny Simpson, I think they're a chance. Yes. I um, yep. think, given the form of those women in recent months and last year, I think they're a, uh, definitely a chance for top four, man. Mm -hmm. Let's hope they play a little bit better than the old hot dog ball. Uh, yeah, they were rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's hard to pick who's going to step it up this year and, and make those finals positions, but um, they're just as much as chance as anyone else to hot dogs. They've got some good players. H Helen Elliott and probably Jan Freestone would be the two players for me to watch this year. Yep. Um, um, Helen's super consistent. Yep. Very solid. Yep. And okay. Jan, um, who was runner up in the bronze uh, award this year. So, yeah, it's going to be, they're going to be a good team. Awesome. Uh, so that wraps it up for the uh, preview of the women's teams. Uh, this year we say goodbye to a few teams. Um, again, with the, the move to 10 teams and possibly maybe an earlier season, we've seen, um, what, eight teams, Matt? So the Iron Ladies, the Swingers, the Derwins, the Perlers, the Go Girls, the QTs, the Q Birdies, and the Silver Foxes. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we see some of those teams back in, uh, back, uh, next back year. in 2018. Yep. Um, predictions. Winner. Winner, I've gone um, who have been pretty consistent over the last couple of years, and as you mentioned, they were just outside the big two last year. What is the early birds? Uh, led by Captain Hilary Hodgetts. Uh, I think they'll win it this yeah, year. Good. I think they will um, win it over uh, Hit and Miss, who will make the grand final two years in a row, and I've picked Hit and Miss to be the survivor winner. Okay. And the Smokey, the Dragon Ladies. New team, yep. unknown. Um, they could make a big impact on this year's competition. So, yeah, my three. What about you? Well, I think the Birdie Num Nums uh, are yep. going to return back to form. I think this year they're going to win it um, mm -hmm. from the early birds. Um, I think hit and miss. I don't know. I just, I'm not sure. I think the early birds and Birdie Num Nums are my two teams. Um, yep. The Smoky this year. I'm going to go with the Hot Dots. I think, the hot put dots. To, I think the Hot Dots yep. have put together a really good team last minute. Mm -hmm. um, good form there. And for the Survivor, I'm going to say the Early Birds. Yep. I reckon they won it last year. They were pretty yep. consistent all year. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, 
Good in num nums for the win. Yes. Smokey was uh, the hot dogs and yep. Survivor the early birds. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all for the women. Uh, they kick off on Tuesday. All the best of luck 2017. Um, we're doing podcasts each week with score updates and see who's playing well and possibly not so well, Matt. Yep. Um, but that's it for the women. We move on to the men. Round one, um, in the last couple of days, and especially Monday, Tuesday, there was a fair bit of banter being thrown around on email channels, social media. Pretty early, yes. Yeah, global trending. There's a lot of uh, a newsletter from a certain mm -hmm. team. Obviously, a lot of people have way too much time on their hands. Correct. Um, it's good. And I think, it that, I think that team actually put us on a, was it a blacklist or we were banned? Pretty much. Um, yep. But that's all right. They can say whatever they want. They've got to let their golf do the talking, which um, we'll get to that, but I don't think it did in round one. No. First match, uh, the Polishers defeated the Roosters. Matt, takes through it. Polishers 166 versus Roosters 160. Um, the best performers for the Polishers were Rob Simons with 37 points. Glenn Dubgarl obviously heard our um, pre-season um, podcast because uh, he's responded with 34 um, and Shane Favoloro 33. For the Roosters, Peter Balharry was the best uh, with 37 points, and Ray Catmull with 33. Notice John Evans only had 29 points. Yeah, the cap, um, yeah, struggling early. Struggling, yes. struggling early, John. Uh, <laughs> yep. Keep it up next week. Uh, the Fockers and the gentlemen golfers. Um, we said, well, I said the Fockers didn't have a chance, yep. um, given they had Greg Krubis. Mm. Uh, Greg, I don't think, has watched the first podcast yet, but he's definitely been told to watch it yep. by multiple people, as we may have been slightly harsh from last week. The Rock. The Rock, uh, Matt English had 38 points, uh, Tony Ram 36, John Parker, their new recruit 35, um, yep. pretty solid scoring. They defeated Gentleman Golfers 164, David Pryor, Randall Bradshaw led the way there, but the Fockers proved too good. Mm -hmm. uh, my team, that uh, my pre-season prediction for the flag um, was Hard Yakka, who stumbled early. Uh, against, against the, the might against the might of, of the Rat Pack, so they basically the Rat Pack put them back in their place yep. early in the season. They were led by Peter Gebert with thirty six, Trevor Rush thirty six or so, and George Cotteridis with thirty five. Rosh Henthorpe thirty five. So they're really consistent all the way through. Which is what we expect from the Rat Pack for the, from the champs. Hard Yak and Murray Carr with thirty five, and Max uh, Hardy and Greg Perryman chipped in with thirty three. But they were beaten pretty convincingly. Pretty soundly. Yeah. Uh, very happy with this result. Um, I picked Norfolk and Good as my prediction for the flag. They've top scored in the first round, and both the players I selected uh, top scored as well. So I know it's only one round, Matt. Yeah. But Andrew Target thirty nine, Brendan one, Brendan Waddy thirty seven, Jim Welsh thirty six, Tim Dewan thirty six, and Captain Doc Allen thirty six. If that's not solid scoring, yep. I don't know what is. Um, the Guzzlers. Somewhat disappointing, guys. Mark Hanger um, said he wanted to basically chuck his entire team out, clean slate, start again. Um, 36, and the rest of the team, probably uninspiring. Uh, Matt, any comments on that? Well, I'm just, I'm just looking at the premiership table in front of me. The, the one good thing about um, uh, the table in regards to the guzzlers is they're not on the bottom. Uh, we do have the buy on the bottom, and the guzzlers second bottom. So. That's at least something to take into next. The silver uh, lining, man. The silver lining, something to take into next week. But the uh, look, the guzzlers may feature a little bit more later on. I think so. Okay, next uh, next match was the Moon Dogs uh, versus Motley Q. Uh, this was the closest round, uh, closest match of the round. Um, Motley Q getting the job done. We did speak about them last week. Um, they are pretty confident in how they're going to go this Definitely. week, this year, and they've started well. Paul Cranich talked big game. He's lived up to it with 37 points. Bruce D 36, and the Prez Michael Pickering 35. For the Moon Dogs, Robert Jackson with 38, John Carroll and Neil Marshall with 34 points. So well done, Motley Q. And the last match of the round, or wasn't really a match, uh, the Q5 boys had the bye, um, so a good percentage booster for them. Um, they had the second top score of the round too, they were quite disappointed uh, when uh, Roger yeah, Gilchrist came in with 39 points, and yep. then I said to him, you've got the bye, Roger, and he was shattered. Yep. Um, but still, maybe a good sign uh, yep. for things to come. Roger Gilchrist, 39, David Bygate, 38, Gordon Wallen, 37, and Bren Collins, 36. Yep. Um, so looking to the ladder, as we said, not really much to talk about, only one round. Mm -hmm. Good to see the guzzlers down the bottom. Um, team Survivor, again, the bye was cut, so that's fine. 
Matt, is it too early to do an under the pump? Um, normally I'd say yes, because one round is not um, the be all and end all in regards to predictions, but we're actually gonna put a whole team under the pump this week. Uh, the Guzzlers, um, they've had 165, uh, which in looking is down near the lowest end of the scores. They probably got, they did get beat by the most uh, in regards to the match this week. So I think the Guzzlers, the whole team is under the pump this week. Um, they do have, who are they playing? They're playing the Fockers next week. So it's, they really need, it's a crossroads I think, even after round one. Yeah, I, I agree, 100%. So looking at next week, Matt, Polishers and Gentlemen Golfers, who wins? Polishers for me. Yep. Roosters and Rat Pack. Oh, hang on, sorry, yes, uh, yeah, Polishers too good. Polishers too good, yeah. yeah. Uh, Roosters and Rat Pack. Um, I think that'll be close. Um, you know what, upset, I'm gonna say the Roosters win that one. Yeah, I agree in the sense that it's gonna be close, but the Rat Pack for me. Okay. Fockers and Guzzlers. Uh, I think Fockers. I think the Guzzlers won't bounce back. I think, um, the captain will need to give um, them a bit of a sting for the guzzlers, and I think the guzzlers will turn it around. Okay, this you week. Yeah. Hard Yakka and Motley Q. Um, your pick, Matt. Hard Yakka had a, a tough week against the Rat Pack, um, but I think Motley Q will win again, two in a row. Yeah, I think Hard Yakka will turn it around. Um, they were my pick for the for the flag this season, so they need to yeah. do something. <laughs> North Oak could have the buy, and yeah. Moon Dogs in the Q Bar Boys. Well. Given the scoring last week, um, the Q Far Boys had 15 more points than the Moon Dogs. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to say Q Far Boys do good. I think the Q Far Boys peaked last week, and I reckon the Moon Dogs will get the job done. Are you just waiting for me to say something? <laughs> yeah. Go the opposite. It's the way you're wrong. Have you on Twitter? Yeah, GPL podcast. Okay, that's it for the second episode of GPL 360. Uh, tune in for episode three, and all the best to all GPL competitors. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thanks, mate.